From the perspective of this world only, Alex's suicide and Rebecca's accidental death made no sense whatsoever. In our brokenness and honest dialogue with the Lord, God started to open our eyes to a bigger picture, the eternal one. In fact, when you view things on earth from an eternal perspective, it tends to turn things upside down. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. As you look in scripture, that in the New Testament, over a hundred times it talks about eternal rewards. And if you think about it, God has wired us to respond to reward and recognition. That's how we're wired. You know, you, you work and you expect to get paid. That's, that's good. You work hard to, as an athlete. You, you hope and pray that you're going to get a medal. In fact, Paul, the Apostle Paul, speaks about running in a race. And he, he actually goes back to the Olympics and talks about how they used to get a little a wreath on their head. And, and then talked about us, that we actually are running for a much greater prize for the things above. So this is how God's wired us. This is how God has, wants us to respond. And, and the thing is, we tend to think about this in a selfish way. What we have to remember is that when we get to heaven, it's none of about us. Nothing's about us. This is all for Jesus. And so this isn't a, a, a bribe sort of thing for selfish reasons. This is an incentive to live for God while we're down here. And I suspect it's something along the lines of God gives us work to do to glorify him. So when Jesus was here on earth, you remember, he, all he did was to, to live to please his Father. I've come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. Uh, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. And then he, he gave parables, for example, the parable uh, of, the, of the landlord. And he said, those who had been faithful, the talents, hey, I gave you 10, you give me 10 back. You'll be in charge of 10 cities. Now, I'm not sure exactly what that looks like, other than the fact it's going to be an extra blessing, if you like, to please God. I don't, I don't think, I'm not sure, I don't think anyone's going to think, oh, look, that person's got this and I haven't got it, and you're going to be all resentful. You won't think like that in heaven. But clearly, Scripture is trying to incentivize us, to encourage us not to live for things down here, but to live for things out there. That's what Jesus said, build up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where moth and rust don't break in. Don't build up for yourselves treasure down here. And so when you start to see this, I was in banking for many, many years. And so I understand about uh, return on investment. We understand that from uh, when you retire, you build up a retirement. We understand those things. You know, you build it up so that you're ready for retirement. Well, we're talking about eternity here. So when you're living for things of our, for the rewards, those are eternal rewards. It's not just for a few years. It goes on forever. And that's why the great men and women of faith, when they saw this, they realized, why would you ever live now for anything down here? Yeah. Now, Jonathan Edwards, who was the great theologian, the first awakening came out from his ministry. Mm -hmm. He said, once he'd seen it, he said, I've resolved to make myself as happy in the next life while I am here in this life. In other words, he's living for the things above. And all the, I say, all the great men and women of, of faith have lived in that way in Hebrews 11. They were looking for a heaven, uh, for, for a city, a heavenly city, not for the things down here. And then, so, so when you see that, it's a crown of righteousness, a crown for faithfulness, for those who are longing for his return. We, 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 it talks about these crowns, these recognition of faithfulness to God's will. So what it comes down to at the end of the day, whatever God has asked each one of us to do, he's called us to be faithful to fulfill those things. So for some people down on earth, he's given them lots of money, financial money. And one day, we, we read in, in 2 Corinthians 5 and 10, one day he's going to come back to us and he will say to us, and what did you do with that, those gifts I gave you? And we will be rewarded for our faithfulness to that calling. Jeannie and I have been given this gift of, of brokenness. It's something we want to be faithful to use. Some people have got great gifts of the working of miracles, or maybe it's working in the power of the Holy Spirit, maybe words of knowledge or, or prophetic gifts. Maybe it's hospitality, all sorts of teaching and preaching and apostleship, all sorts of different gifts that God's given to different people. All that he asks us to do is to be faithful to the things that he's put into our hands, to, to live for him and his will while we're here on earth. We have died. 
mm. um, in a sense, mm. to what we thought yes. our plans were yes. for our lives, for our yeah. families, yes. and even how we would glorify Jesus. Yes. So, um, taking me back to the cross, I feel with this fresh wave of the Spirit that God has enriched my soul, I would call it through almost, um, and I found it somewhere in Isaiah, the treasures in the darkness. Yes. Um, he has shown me that, this, that my, my soul has risen above my, my thinking. And that has been a true gift of the Holy Spirit that I can even sit here today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would come me. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk. awakeningtogod.org and partner with us in prayer, financial giving and spreading the message.